Hi guys and welcome to a new video. Unfortunately, the last 10 days the weather is very bad. A lot of rain, a lot of wind and it's also pretty cold. And talking about a cold, I also have a cold, my family has a cold. So I'm also having some mild sleep deprivation. So if it happens that you think that I look a little bit tired and I sound a bit rough, then you know why. Anyway, I wasn't able to fly the last week. So I was pretty bummed out. I wasn't able to make a new progression video for you guys, but I have an idea. If you're new to this channel, let me explain to you what this channel is all about. Back in September this year, 2022, I started flying FPV. Ever since my first manual flight, I upload uh, videos to YouTube regularly. The main reason I started uploading these videos was to track my own progression. But soon after my first one or two uploads, you guys started to ask questions and are, were very supportive. Um, so I decided to keep uploading. And a few weeks ago, I hit 100 subscribers and then I decided to start vlogging. But already after my first few uploads, I forgot that I forgot a crucial step in this progression. And that is what I did before I did my first manual flight. And I think today is the perfect day to tell you more about that. I remember seeing one of my first FPV videos. It was someone flying in a schoolyard. It was back in 2019, but I wasn't thinking about starting to fly myself. And then in the beginning of 2021, I believe that DJI launched their first FPV drone. But at this time we were um, just moving. We just bought a new house. So I didn't have money laying around to buy that drone. And then earlier this year in 2022, I started watching videos and also videos about how to start. And that's when I soon found out that it's a very steep learning curve. And not only the flying itself, but also building the drone, all the components. And I soon found out that it wasn't a cheap hobby to get into. So I started to dig in what the best way or the cheapest way was to get into the FPV hobby. Most people start flying in a simulator. Finding the right simulator for me wasn't very hard because I'm a Mac user and I believe most of the simulators are for Windows um, but Velocidrone is also available for Mac. Finding the right radio was a little bit harder. It was recommended to buy um, already a good radio that I could use uh, for real flying and I already decided I wanted to go for the DJI digital system so the radio the air unit and the goggles but yeah the radio was very expensive um, I believe 300 350 euros so that wasn't a very cheap option and then I found out about this radio so this radio uh, I don't even know what it's called exactly. It's something with SM600. Um, I will put it on the screen now uh, with the full name. This is a radio just meant for simulators. It comes with a USB connection. You just hook this up to your computer and assign the radio in the simulator and you can start flying it. And I just looked it up. I paid 27 euros for this. And for Velocity Drone, I paid 20 euros, I believe. So for just under 50 euros, I was able to start to learn flying with manual controls. And I also started watching a lot of videos about what it means to fly manual. So what it means to the controls, what to do with the left stick, the right stick. I will link these videos uh, in the description down below. Because remember, I'm also still very new to this hobby. And there are a lot of people, a lot of good videos with in-depth information about how to start. So I will link them down below. It will maybe save you some time instead of doing research yourself. As you can see, I did about 15 hours in the sim before I started my first real flight. Ever since I fly 
um, for real. I don't have been using the simulator as much because I don't find it really feeling uh, the same. Of course the controls are the same but the, the physics are a bit different. For me it was enough to, to learn to fly but I prefer to practice in real life. And I think the hardest part was switching to this controller because yeah, th of course this is the controller you use with the Avada. Um, yeah, it's a lot smaller than this uh, big bulky radio but it was just a matter of time before I got used to this. Oh, and by the way, if you are wondering, it is possible to connect this controller to Floss Drone 2. So I started practicing in the simulator and I indeed found out it was a very steep learning curve. At least for me, I found it very hard to control the drone. And after 15 hours, it was going pretty well. And at some point in the summer, I kind of forgot about it until August came. That's when the Avada launched. Sorry for my handwriting. And I remember seeing the drone at the day of the launch. I thought right away, this is it. This is the perfect drone for me to start flying. So I hope you get something out of this video. Uh, like I said, I will place some helpful links in the description down below. And for now, I want to thank you for watching the video. Uh, ever since I got it hooked up, uh, I will go for a fly, I think. So thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And I hope to see you in the next one.